That you, Pop? Yeah. Morning, Noah. Morning. Heard somebody fussing around in the kitchen. I was hoping it was Lizzie. Well, she was so dead beat after a trip, I figured I'd let her sleep. Yeah. Heard her walk in her room last night till hell knows when. It's getting late. Maybe I'll uh, wake her up. No, I wouldn't do that, Noah. She must have had a pretty rough trip. Let her sleep it off. I sure hope she'd fix breakfast. But I guess if we didn't croak after a week of your cooking, we can make it through another meal. Noah, Jimmy just fixed that thing. Now, don't you go breaking it again. Well, if that kid's gonna waste his money on a darn fool crystal set, why can't we get some good out of it? Can't hear a thing. What do you want to hear? Oh, I thought somebody say something about the drought. Only one thing to say. No rain. No, no sign of it, neither. Well, you cross out another day. No, I wish you wouldn't do that. You and that damn calendar. Why don't you stop counting? When it rains, it rains. You know what I seen this morning? Three more calves down and out. A couple of heifers, too. But you know what I had to do? I had to give Frank and Sandy their time. You mean you fired them? No, I just... Laid them off till the drought's over. Shouldn't have done that, Noah. Listen, Pop, if you want to take over the bookkeeping, you're welcome to it. There's the books you can have. Oh, now, Noah, I wouldn't do that to you. How do you want your eggs? It's the best way you can't ruin them. Raw. I'll take them raw. Morning. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, morning, Pop. Morning, Jimmy. Hey, Pop, it's just like I told you. Just like I told you yesterday. What'd you tell me, Jimmy? Well, I said you like this. I said the whole world's gonna blow up. I said it's gonna get all swole up and bust right out in our faces. You sure about that, Jim? You bet I'm sure. You see, it's all got to do with the spots on the sun. One of these days, some spots is gonna get so big that the sun won't be able to shine through. And then... <laughs> you keep thinking about that, you're gonna miss your breakfast. Yeah. Don't do me any good thinking about it. It just gets me all upset. Holy mackerel. No, the eggs is raw. What about it? What's the matter? You sick? No, I ain't sick. Well, you sure must be sick eating raw eggs. Ah, uh, he's all right, Jimmy. He just don't like my cooking. Why? You cook better than Lizzie, Pop. I like the way you cook. Everything goes down nice and greasy. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> How do you want your eggs? Oh, any old way. Cooked. How many? Um, five or six will do. Thanks, Pop. Jimmy? Hmm? Jimmy, if you'll come up for a minute, I got something to say to you. What? Last night, you could have got yourself into a hat full no, of trouble. No, we have to talk about that now. What kind of trouble, Noah? Noah? Certain girl named Snooky. Oh, was Snooky at the dance? <laughs> well, she at the dance. You'd have thought nobody else was there. Come driving up in a brand new five-cylinder Essex car. And her hair is so bleached blonde, you can see her coming right there. ain't down. bleached, no. Don't you tell me. Gil Demby says she comes in the store buys a pint of peroxide every month. What's that? I use peroxide for Katrina. She cut herself that often, she'd bleed to death. What happened, Jim? I'll tell you what happened. Along about 9.30, I look around, there's no Jim and no Snooky. Dumb kid, he walked out of that barn dance without even tipping his hat. Went off with that hot pants girl. I didn't go off with her, no, I went off by myself. I was outside looking at that Essex. And pretty soon she comes out and she's kind of staring me up and down. And I says, 
how many cylinders does this Essex got? And she said, five. And then she says, how tall are you? And I said, six. And before you know it, go riding in that Essex. She's got that car racing 40 miles an hour. Oh, man, Pop, it was fast. Everything about that girl is fast. What do you mean by that, Noah? Just what I said. When the dance is over and we're supposed to go down to the depot, pick Lizzie up, I had to go looking for him. You know where he was? Parked in that girl's car, just outside Denby's store. And the two of them, I've never seen such goings on in all my life. They so twisted up, you couldn't tell where he left off and Snooky began. If I hadn't come along, hell knows what would have happened. Yeah, hell knows. Could have come home with a little red hat. With her what? So where's this little red hat? Why would you want to come home with a little red hat? Nothing. Nothing. Go on, tell him. No, you quit it. Well, I'll tell him. He wears this little red hat. Well, last night, Dumbo Hopkins says to her, Snooky, you wore the little red hat all your life? She just giggles and says, Well, I hope not, Dumbo. I'm going to give it to some handsome fella. When, as, and if. <laughs> now, it ain't funny, Pop. Do you know what kind of trouble you can get yourself into with a girl like that? Dumb kid like you. Pretty soon, she's got you hogtied and you got to marry her. Won't you leave me alone, Noah? <laughs> you hear that, Pop? Maybe that's a good idea, Noah. What's a good idea? To let him alone. Yeah, maybe it is. All right. You want me to leave you alone? Kid, you're alone. No, I don't know why you're getting so mad. You don't, huh? No. You think I like looking out after you? Well, I don't. Tagging after me all your life. How do I tie my shoelaces? How do I do long division? Well, if you don't want my advice, if you think you're so smart. No, I ain't saying I'm so smart. Heck, I don't mind you telling me how to do and how to figure things out. Thanks. What I'm saying is, no, I appreciate it. I just wish you wouldn't holler. All right. That's enough, boys. Hundred and one degrees. If only it'd cool off at night. I don't mind a hot night. Something about a hot night gets you all kind of steered up inside. Hey, Pop, wh why don't Lizzie come down and make our breakfast for us? Let her sleep. She didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> yeah. She gets off the train, she comes home and starts cleaning up her bedroom in the middle of the night. Hell, there's no need for that. I, I cleaned up her room real nice. Jimmy, when some girls ain't happy, they cry. Lizzie works. Yeah. Well, what are we gonna do about her, Pop? I don't know. Well, we gotta do something. You gotta talk to her. Mention. Who's going to mention it to her? I told you, Pop, I'm not going to talk to her. Me neither. I'm not going to talk to Stop her. Stop saying exactly what Noah's saying. Speak for yourself. I'm saying what Noah's saying because I agree with him. And when I don't, I spit in his eye. Then why don't you talk to her? Because if we talk to her, she's going to think we're trying to get rid of her. She'll sure think the same if I do it. Maybe. 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 So? There you are. Yeah, but you're her father. And there comes a time when the father's got dementia. I can't. I can't just speak up and say, Lizzie, you gotta get married. She knows she's gotta get married. We all know it. Well, then, looks like there's no point to mention anything. Morning, Pop. Oh, morning, honey. Jimmy, Noah. Lizzie. Morning, Lizzie. Well, sure is good to be home again. That's just what the boys were saying. Sure is good to have Lizzie home again. <laughs> no sign of rain yet, is there? No. Not a cloud nowhere. I dreamed we had a rain. Great big rain. Did you, Lizzie? Yeah, thunderstorm. Rain coming down in sheets. Lightning flashed and thunder rolled up and down the canyon like a kid with a big drum. And I looked up and I laughed and I yelled. Oh, it was wonderful. 
Drought's drought, a dream's a dream. It was a nice dream, Noah, nearly as good as rain. Near ain't rain. It's too bad we picked you up at the depot so late last night, Lizzie. Didn't get much chance to talk about your trip. Um, yeah, it looks like it perked you up real good. <laughs> you was looking kind of dragged out by the heat. What was it like in Sweet River, Lizzie? Hotter than hell. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny about her talking like a cow hand. Sorry, Noel, that's about all the conversation I've heard for a week. Uh, how's Uncle Ned, Lizzie, and uh, Aunt Ivy? How's oh, all Aunt them Ivy. boys? Big. <laughs> they take after Aunt Ivy. I'll bet they talked your ear off. No, they take after Uncle Ned. They just grunt. Which one of them got to be the best looking of the boys, Lizzie? Oh, I guess Pete. Never could get those boys straight. Which one is Pete? Pete? Pete's the one with the yellow hair. Well, yellow, yellow hair is nice in a man. It's honest. Oh, Pete was honest, all right. You way he said that, Lizzie, I bet you like him the best. Mm, I was crazy about Pete. He asked me to marry him. Is that true, he Lizzie? Did. He did. Well, what'd you tell him? I told him I would. As soon as he graduates from grammar school. Grammar school? Is he that dumb? <laughs> no, he's only nine years old. Now, Pop, let's not beat around the bush. I know why you sent me to Sweet River. Because Uncle Ned's got six boys, and three of them are old enough to get married, and so am I. Sorry he went to all that expense, railroad ticket, all them new clothes. The trip didn't work. No, I'll write that in the books. Put it in red ink. What happened in uh, Sweet River, Lizzie? Nothing. Not a doggone thing. What'd you do? Where'd you go? Well, first three or four days I was there. Saved my room, mostly. What'd you do that for? Because I was embarrassed. Embarrassed about what? No, well, use your head. I knew why I was there. My whole family knew it, too. I couldn't stand the way they were looking me over. So I'd go downstairs for my meals, and I'd rush back up to my room, and I packed, and I unpacked, and I packed, and I unpacked. I washed my hair a dozen times. I read the Sears Roebuck catalog from cover to cover. Finally, I said to myself, Lizzie Curry, snap out of this. Well, it was a Saturday night, and they were all going to a rodeo dance. So I got myself all decked out, my highest heels, my lowest cut dress, and I went down to that supper table, and all those boys looked at me as if I was dark naked. And for the longest while, it wasn't a sound at that supper table except for Uncle Ned slopping his soup. And then, well, then suddenly, like a gunshot, that Ned Jr. says, he says, Lizzie, how much do you weigh? What'd you say to that? I said, I weigh 119 pounds. My teeth are on my own, and I stand 17 hands high. <laughs> Well, I wasn't too smart, Lizzie. I was only trying to open the conversation. <laughs> well, I guess I closed it. Yeah. Uh, oh, then about ten minutes later, uh, little Pete came hurrying into the supper table. He was carrying a geography book, and he says, Pop, where's Madagascar? Well, everybody ventured an opinion. <laughs> they were all dead wrong. And suddenly I felt I ought to make a good impression. And I said, it's an island in the Indian Ocean, off the coast of Africa, right opposite Mozambique. Well, <laughs> can I help it if I was good in geography? What happened? Well, it was so quiet, you'd have thought it was the end of the world. And then, then that Ned Jr. said, Lizzie, you fixing to be a school marm? Oh, no. Yes. Suddenly, I felt I was way back at a high school dance, and nobody dancing with me. 
I got that sick feeling I used to get when I was wearing eyeglasses, and, well, I knew from that minute on it was no go, so I didn't go to the rodeo dance. Stayed home and made up poems about what was on sale at Sears Robux. You and little Pete. Yes. When I left Sweet River, little Pete was bawling. He said, he said, Lizzie, you're the most beautifulest girl I ever was. And he's right. You are. Oh, Pop, please. We, we see you that way. He see you that way. Not as big brothers. Because you didn't show yourself right. I tried. I no, tried. No, no, you didn't. You hid behind your books. You hid behind your glasses that you don't even wear no more. You're afraid of being beautiful. Well, I'm afraid to think I am when I know I'm not. Lizzie? Yes? Me and the boys, uh, we put our heads together and uh, we thought we'd mention something to you. What? You want to tell her about it, Noah? Nope. It's your idea, Pop. Well, the boys and me, uh, after we get some work done, we figured to ride over to Three Points this afternoon. Well? We're going to the sheriff's office and go to see his deputy. File? Yes, file. That's a crazy idea. I'm only going to invite him to supper, Lizzie. Well, if you do, I won't be well, here. I can invite a fellow to supper in my own house. I, I don't want you to lasso a husband for me. I won't do anything of the kind. I won't even say your name. We'll start talking about a poker game, maybe, and uh, then we'll get around to supper. And before you know it, you'll be sitting right here in this chair. No. Lizzie, we're going no matter what you say. Hold on, pup. I'm against this. But if Lizzie says it's okay to go down there and talk to File, I'll go right along with you. Only one thing. We don't do it if Lizzie says no. And that's what I say. No. Don't listen to Noah. Every time you and Jim have to scratch your back, you turn and ask Noah. That's because he's the only sensible one around here. Three of us, we get carried away. But and once before in your you life, know it... get carried away. It won't hurt you, not a bit. That's the dumbest advice I ever heard in my life. What's so dumb? It's a matter of pride. Is that why you say no, Lizzie? Pride? Pop, if you want to ask somebody to supper, go ahead. Ask him. I'm not file. He doesn't know I'm on earth. He knows, Lizzie. He knows. No, he doesn't. No, whenever we ride into town, he's got a great big hello for you and Noah and Jimmy. He's got nothing for me. He just barely sneaks his hat off his head. He makes a point of ignoring me. When a man makes a point of ignoring you, he ain't ignoring you at all. Now, how about it, Lizzie? File for supper? No, I don't like him. No, no, no. If you don't no, really like no. him, one no is enough. And you can say it quiet. Quiet? I don't like him. I don't like the way he's always tucking his thumbs in his belt. And he always seems to be thinking deep thoughts. I thought you liked people with deep thoughts. Not file. Lizzie, when you were a kid, whenever I thought you were lying, I'd say to you, honest and true, and then you'd never lie. Well, I'm saying <laughs> it now. That's a silly game. You don't like file, honest Pop, and true? That's a silly childish game. Now, answer my question. A silly answer, honest and true? A silly Oh, go on and. Invite him. <laughs> okay, come on, boys. Come on. You go ahead and cook a great supper. Oh, I will. I will. Oh, I will. Well, will you just listen to me? Now, will you just listen? Sure, when I was dead broke, you lent me some money. I need a job. You made me your deputy. When I catch cold, you bring me a little mustard plaster. 
Now you want to give me a dog, and I do not want a dog. Well, I won't charge you anything for it. You never charge me for anything. I just don't want a dog. How do you know you don't want this dog until you've seen him? I've seen dogs. Yeah, but not this one. I mean, this dog is different. I mean, when he sits there and looks up at you with his big eyes, you just want to reach out and hug him to death. You think I will, huh? Yes, you will. This is a real loving dog. You can sit there in your naked feet and he'll come up and start licking your big toe. And pretty soon you look down and there he is, dead asleep right across your feet. How about a file? Huh? Sounds real homey, but I think I'll do without him. File, you disgust me. You know, it ain't right for a man to shack up alone here with nothing but a coffee pot and a leather sofa. Especially after you've been married once. I mean, when a, when a man loses his woman, he needs something warm up against his backside at night. Mm-hmm. Well, last night was 104 degrees. Okay, if you don't want the dog, don't take him. If you're one of those kind of men who don't like animals... Oh, I like animals. Well, if you liked animals, you'd have an animal. I've had them. Yeah, I bet. What kind? Back in Peddleville, I went out and got myself a raccoon. Hell, a raccoon ain't a dog. <laughs> no, I guess it ain't. But I liked him. He's a crazy little fellow, and he made me laugh. Yeah, what happened to him? I don't know. One day he took off to the woods and never came back. Little bastard. There you see. Did you ever figure a dog doing a thing like that? No siree. I tell you, Philo, if you'd ever had a dog, you'd... I've had dogs. When did you have a dog? When I was a kid. Yeah, what kind was it? Mongrel. Kid's kind. What'd you call him? Dog. No, no, I mean, what was his name? Dog. I mean, you never gave that dog a name. Dog, that was his name, Sheriff. Well, dog. that ain't no fitting kind of a name for a dog. I don't see why not. Oh, you don't see why not. No, he, he always came when I called him. File, you couldn't have liked that dog very much or you'd have given him a name. Oh, I liked him a lot, Sheriff. Gave him everything he wanted. Took good care of him, too. In fact, better, better than he took care of himself. Yeah, what happened to him? One day he ran out under a buckboard. There you see. You think everything's gonna run off or get run over? I don't know, Sheriff. I just don't want a dog. Not that I ain't obliged. You know, you are as stubborn as a mule. Every time I... <clears throat> ah, what the hell. I think I'll go outside and see what's going on. Yeah. Sleeps on your feet, does he? That's right. Sleeps on your feet. Sleeps right on your big old stinking feet. <laughs> hey, I'll see you later, Pop. Yeah. Sleep, sir. Wow. Hey, Fife. Hey, 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 boys. Wow. Well, yeah, riding over, did you boys see any sign of rain? Out of spit. What's it like in Sweet River? How'd we know? We ain't been to Sweet River. Oh, sure said Lizzie's been to Sweet River. Yeah. What's it like? Dry. Well, how'd Lizzie like it in Sweet River? Fine. She liked it real fine. She liked it real fine. Three barn dances, a <clears throat> rodeo, a summer fair, and just larking all over the place. How's your poker, file? My what? Poker. Oh, I don't like poker much, A.C. You don't? Don't you like spit in the ocean? Not much. Well, we figured to ask you to play some cards. 
Well, I gave up playing cards a long time ago, H.C. You did? Mm-hmm. Hey, Val, what, what, what's that hanging down from your shirt right there? Kind of looks like a needle. Sure does. What's the matter, your shirt tore? Looks like it. Fix it yourself, do you? Sure do. No, I wouldn't say that now, Jim. I've been mending my own shirts ever since I became a widower back in Pedleyville. Well, Lizzie fixes all my shirts. Must be nice to have a sister. <laughs> or something. Did, uh, did uh, Lizzie come back from uh, Sweet River by herself, did she? Sure. She went by herself, didn't she? Oh, that don't mean nothing. I went down to Leverston to buy myself a mare. I went by myself, but I came back with a mare. <laughs> well, Lizzie didn't go down there to buy nothing, File. You got it? Nothing. No, you ornery, Jim. I just ask a friendly question. Sure. Just a friendly question. Don't get ornery. Yeah, I always say to Jim, the reason you ain't got no real friends because you're ornery. You just don't know how to make friends. Oh, sure I do. Sure I no, do. No, you don't. You ever, you ever ask a fella out to have a drink? No. You ever say to a fella, come home and have some supper? Oh, I guess you're right. Uh, gee, file I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to get ornery. Uh, come on out and have a drink. Supper. Come home and have some supper. Uh, I guess I'll say no to the supper, boys, but uh, I'd be glad to go out and have a drink with you. Uh, <clears throat> well, we ain't got time for a drink, but we was figuring on inviting you over to supper one of these days. Well, I'll be glad to come one of these days. How about tonight? I uh, don't have the time tonight. Seems there's some kind of outlaw headed our way. A fellow name of Tornado Johnson. Have to stick around. Well, no, you don't know he's coming this way, do you? He's three point bound. But you don't know he'll be here tonight. I don't know he won't be here tonight. Oh, he might be out of Pedleyville or Pete's Junction. He might even be out at our place. Well, uh, I won't be out at your place, Jim. Pop, you told me to try and be friendly, but he just don't want to be friendly. I want to be friendly, Jim. Just don't want to be married. Well, who says we're inviting you out to the house for Lizzie? Can you take that back, File? I won't take anything back, Jim. You take something else back, then, huh? Oh. If I didn't think you had that coming, I'd wipe you up good and clean. You had it coming. I guess we all did. Come on, Turtlehead. Oh. Let's go home. Shouldn't have hit him, H.C. Oh, that's all right. The only thing is, you know, you lost that fight. What? That's right. Wouldn't have hurt you to come and have supper. It might have done you some good. We weren't talking about supper, H.C. That's H. right. We were talking about Lizzie. And she might have done you some good, too. Well, I can mend my own shirts. Seems to me you need a lot more mending than shirts. Now, wait a minute, H.C. You don't drop a word like that and just leave it. All right. What'd you hit him for? Threw a punch. I got angry. Angry? Why? We come around here and say we like you enough to have you part of our family. Is that an insult? I don't like people interfering. Interfering with what? I'm doing all right by myself. You ain't doing all right, File. For a fellow that won't make friends with a whole town that likes him and looks up to him? A fellow that shuts himself in? He ain't doing all right. And if he says he is, he's a liar. Take it easy, H.C. I said a liar and I mean it. Now, you talk about yourself as being a widower. Well, we all got respect for your feelings. But you ain't a widower. And everybody in this I town knows I am a it. widower. My wife died six years ago back in Pedleyville. Your wife didn't die, File. She ran out of it. And you're a divorced man. But we'll all go on calling you a widower as long as you want us to. Hell, it don't hurt us none. But you, a fellow that shuts himself up with that, with that, with that lie, he needs bending. 
Want to throw any more punches? Five, six o'clock. Oh, uh, well, we didn't tell him no exact time, Lizzie. Oh, no, that's real smart. Suppose he comes at seven, all my cooking goes dry. I got the prettiest lemon cake in the oven and a steak and kidney pie as big as this table. Lizzie. Oh, my God, I got to change them. I'll get caught looking at me. No, answer that phone. And if Jimmy comes in, don't let him near that table. He'll mess it up. Hello? Hello? Who? No, this ain't Jim. It's no. Who's this? It's Snooky McGuire. Hot dog. What exactly do you mean, hot dog? Just hot dog, Noah. Well, what you gonna say to her? I don't know what she's gonna say to me. Well, just watch out. Hello? Hello, Snooky. Oh, I'm fine. Fine and dandy. Um, are, are you fine and dandy? Well, I'm sure glad that you're fine and dandy, too. Fine and dandy, my big foot. I was gonna call you, Snooky, but you called me. Now, isn't that the prettiest coincidence? Jimmy, for Pete's sake. What? Uh, you mean it, Snooky? You mean it? Gee, I sure hope that you mean it. What's all that you mean it about? She said it's a hot night out, and the Essex is saying, Chug, Chug, where's little Jimmy? <laughs> Well, you tell her, chug, chug, little Jimmy's gonna sit home on his little fat bottom. Now, wait a minute, Noah. Don't you say, wait a minute. You want to get yourself in hot water, you go right ahead. But I wash my hands of it. Hello, uh, Snooky? I just can't tonight. Well, I don't know why exactly. Anyway, I, I just can't talk right now. Uh, oh, Snooky? Uh, are you still wearing that little red hat? <laughs> well, that's fine, Snooky. You take care of that hat. Goodbye, Snooky. You see there? You go out with her once, she starts chasing you. Well, I don't see what's wrong with that, Noah. You don't, huh? No, people want to get together. They ought to be able to get together. It, it doesn't matter how, does it? Now, you ask yourself if it really don't matter, Jim. Go on now, ask yourself. Well, maybe it does. Oh, holy mackerel. I sure wish I could figure things out. I sure wish I could get something on this crystal set. Something. Hey, Noah, do you think I could get Kansas City on this thing? Nope. Yeah? The other day I was fiddling with this thing and all of a sudden I heard a sound like the prettiest music and I, I said to myself, son of a gun, I got Kansas City. Static, that's all just static. <laughs> no, I knew you were gonna say that and I figured out an answer to it. If it feels like Kansas City, it is Kansas City. Then why don't you make it feel like Africa? On <laughs> this little crystal set? <laughs> Where's Lizzie? Did you tell her? No. She ran upstairs to get dressed. <laughs> well, folks, how do I look? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I am. If you don't look too close. Now, when do you suppose Fi will get here? I want to know sometime we can start eating. We when? can start any time you say. Anytime? Well, 
Well, you better wash up and we'll have more room at the table. Fire's not coming. Nope. I see. Uh, not that he didn't want to come, Lizzie. Uh, he, he wanted to a lot. He did, huh? Uh, sure. Pop said, uh, uh, come to supper tonight, file. And, uh, w when Pop said that, uh, did you notice the way his face kind of, uh, lighted up? Did you notice that, Pop? Yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, file said, sure, sure, I'll come. I'm glad to come. And, uh, then he, he remembered. What did he remember, Jimmy? Uh, well, he remembered that, uh, there's some kind of an outlaw running around, and uh, he better stick around and, and pay attention to his job. Business before pleasure. Yes, sir, Fire was real friendly. Friendly, huh? What happened to your eye? It kind of swolled up on me, huh? File hit him. You mean you fought to get him to come here? Well, it was only a little fight, Lizzie. Why didn't you make it a big one? A riot. Why didn't you pile on top of him, slug him, drag him here? Lizzie, you're seeing this all wrong. I'm seeing she... it the way it happened. He said she might be a pretty good cook and it might be a good supper, but she's plain, plain as old shoes. He didn't say anything like that. He didn't say nothing about shoes. Lizzie, we made a mess out of it. If you'd have taken my advice, there wouldn't have been any mess. I told you not to go down there and talk to File. Nobody listened. I told you not to send her to Sweet River. Nobody listened. Hell, I don't like being right all the time, but for Pete's sake. Well, no, I'm stumped. If you were Lizzie's father, what would you do? Well, who says we got to do anything? We've been pushing her around, trying to marry her off. Why? What if she don't get married? Is that the end of everything? She got a home. She got a family. She could... Bed and board and clothes on her back and plenty to eat. Noah's right. From now on, we listen to Noah. Don't you dare listen to him. Why? She got everything she needs. She ain't got what'll make her happy. She ain't gonna get it, neither, because she's going at it all wrong. Al, Jimmy, how am I going at it wrong? Because you don't talk to a fella the way you oughta, Lizzie. You talk too serious. And if there's anything scares the hell out of a fella, it's a serious talking girl. That's the way Lizzie is. She can't be anything else. Yes, she can. She's as good as any of them girls down at the Lady Social Club. She can go down the social on Wednesday nights, and she can giggle and flirt as good as any of them. What do you want her to turn into, Lily Ann Beasley? Well, Lily Ann Beasley gets any man that she goes for. I saw her walk up to Phil Mackey one morning, and, and she started to wiggle her hips like a little cocker spaniel, and she said, why, Phil Mackey, how many toes do you got? And he said, well, naturally, I got 10. And then she said, why, that's just the right number of toes for a big, strong fella to have. <laughs> Pretty soon, he was cooked. He started following her around, and she got him so nervous, just bust right out with the shingles. Well, if she wants Phil Mackey, she can have him shingles and all. Well, what about that livestock fella from Chicago? Jimmy, can I treat a man the way she treated him? My polka dot tie, those dots go right to my heart. <laughs> Jimmy! Yeah, the poor fella. Blood rushed out of his face. I, th I thought he was going to keel right over in the horse trough. I don't want a man to keel over. I want him to stand up straight, and I want to... Stand up straight to him without having to trick him. Isn't, isn't that possible? Isn't that possible with a man? No, it ain't. Yes, it is. No. For once in his life, Jimmy said something sensible. If it's a man you want, you've got to get a man the way a man gets got. That's the way a man gets got. I don't want any of them. Lizzie. No, the hell with file, the hell with don't all you use of them. Language. Lizzie. Hell, hell, Lizzie. hell, hell. hell open that door. Must have been a wind. Wind? Did you say wind? There's not a breath of wind anywhere in the world. Who are you? Name is Starbucks. Starbucks name. Lady of the house. Hello. Hello. That's a mighty nice dress. It ought to go to a party. Don't you knock on a door before you come in. What is it? 
What can we do for you? You're asking the wrong question. The question is, what can I do for you? I don't remember we called for anybody to do anything. You should have, mister. You sure should have. You need a lot of help. You're in a parcel of trouble. You lost 12 steers on the north range. You lost 62 in the gully. Your calves are starving, and the heifers are down on their knees. You sure know a heck of a lot about our herd. Oh, boy, that sure is a shiner. Hmm? Is this your ranch, mister? He owns it. I run it. Well, I guess I'll talk to you then. You got a look of business about you. You got your feet apart, you stand solid on the ground. That's the kind of man I like to talk to. Well, what are you gonna do about them cattle? Well, since you know we lost them cattle, you ought to know what killed them. Drought, you ever hear of it? Hear of it? That's all I hear. Wherever I go, there's drought ahead of me. But when I leave, behind me there's rain. Rain. I think this man's crazy. Sure, that's what I am, crazy. I woke up this morning, I took a good look at the world, and I said to myself, the world has gone completely out of its mind. And the only thing that can set it straight is a first class, A number one, a lunatic. Well, here I am, folks, crazy as a bed bug. Did I introduce myself? The name is Starbuck, Rainmaker. I've heard of Rainmakers. I read about a Rainmaker, I think it was in Idaho. What'd you read, mister? Can't remember whether they locked him up or just ran him out of town. <laughs> yeah, well, it might be they strung him up on a sycamore tree. <laughs> well, the fact is, fella, we just don't believe in rainmakers. What do you believe in? Dying cattle? You really mean that you can bring rain? He can't bring anything. He talks too fast. I'm asking him. Can you bring rain? It's been done, brother. It has been done. W where? How? How? Sodium chloride. You just pitch it up high, right straight into the clouds. Electrify the cold front, and you neutralize the warm front, and you barometricize the tropopause, and then you magnetize occlusions right up in the sky. <laughs> in other words, bunk. A lady, you're right. And you know why that sounds like bunk? Because it is bunk. Bunk and hokey pokey. And I tell you, I'd be ashamed to use any of those methods. What methods do you use? Well, my methods are like my name. They're all my own. You want to hear my deal? We're not interested. Not one bit. What is it? Pop, you're not going to listen to this man. Any charge for listening? No charge. Free. Free. Go ahead. What's the deal? $100 in advance, and inside of 24 hours, you will have rain. You mean it? Real rain? Well, rain is rain, brother. It comes from the sky. It's a wetness known as water. Aqua pura. Mammals drink it. Fish swim in it. Little boys wade in it. And little birds will flap their wings and sing like sunrise. Water. I recommend it. Pay him the hundred, Noah. Noah, don't be a chump. Well, me? Don't you worry. I won't. Noah, we got the drought. It's rain, Lizzie. We need it. We won't get a drop of it. Not from him. How would you do it, Starbuck? Well, now don't ask me no question. Why, it's a fair question. How will you do it? Well, why do you care how I do it, sister, as long as it's done? But I'll tell you how I'll do it. I'll lift this stick. I'll take a long swipe at the sky, and I'll let down a shower of hailstones the size of cantaloupes. Well, I'll shout out some good old Nebraska cuss words, and you'll turn around, and there's a lake where your corral used to be. Or maybe I'll sing a little tune, and it'll sound so pretty, and sound so sad, you'll weep, and your old man will weep, and the sky will get all misty-like and shed down the prettiest little tears you ever did see. <laughs> how will I do it? Girl, I'll just do it. Where'd you ever bring rain before? What town? What state? Last place I brought rain and now called Starbuck. They named it after me. Dry, I tell you, those people didn't have enough damp to blink their eyes. So I have to get out my rolling wheel and my big drum and my yellow hat with the three little feathers in it and I look up at the sky and I say, Cumulus! I say cumulonimbulus, nimbulocumulus, and pretty soon, way up yonder, there's a teeny little cloud looking like a mare's tail. And then up yonder, there's another little cloud, about the size of a whitewashed chicken house. And then I look up, and all of a sudden, there's a herd of white buffalo stampeding across the sky. And then, sister of all good people, down comes the rain. Rain in barrels, rain in buckets, filling the lowlands, flooding the gullies, and the land is as green as the Valley of Adam. And when I rode out of there, I looked behind me, and I see the prettiest colors in the sky, green, blue, purple, gold, colors that make you cry. And me, I'm riding right through that rainbow. Well, how about it? We got a deal? Well... No, Pop, he's a liar and a con man. Yeah, that's what he is, all right, a liar and a con man. It hurts me to hear you say that, mister. 
So long to you. So long for a sorry night. Wait a minute. You said I was a con man. You're a liar and a con man. But I didn't say I wouldn't take your deal. Pop, wait a minute. You can't do that. I didn't say I would, neither. Pop, you're not going to give this man a hundred bucks. Now, how do I write that in the books? Write it as a gamble, though. I lost more than that poker on Saturday night. You get an even chance in poker? Lizzie, I knew an old fellow once had the asthma. And he went to every doctor and still he coughed and still he wheezed. And then one day, a liar and a con man come along and took the old man for $50 and a gold-plated watch. But a funny thing. After the con man left, the old boy never coughed one minute till the day he was kicked in the head by a horse. That's a crazy reason. I'll give you better reasons, Lizzie girl. You gotta take my deal because once in your life, you gotta take a chance on a con man. You gotta take my deal because there's dying calves that might pick up and live. Because $100, only $100, but rain in a dry season is a sight to behold. You gotta take my deal because it's gonna be a hot night. And the world goes crazy on a hot night, and it might be that's what a hot night's for. Starbuck, you got you a deal. I'll tell you, I knew I had me a deal the minute I walked into this house. How'd you know that? Well, I see four of you, and I see five places set for supper, and I says to myself, Starbuck, your name is wrote right there on that chair. <laughs> Let's eat. I'm against this pup. Keep counting, Noah. 90, 95, 100. There's your 100 bucks. Thank you, Noah. Well, thank me. You thank him. I'll write that down in my books. $100 thrown away. No, don't write that. Write it like this. Say that on August the 27th, a man comes stomping through our doorway. We bid him the time of night, and we fed him a supper fit for a king, and we gave him 100 honest notes on the fair government of the United States of America. And in return for that hospitality, he did us one small favor. He brought rain. You got that? Write it. I don't see no rain yet. I still got 23 hours to bring it. You better get busy. Yes, Starbuck, you better knuckle down. Now, let's not get nervous. Rain, my friends, rain comes to the man that ain't nervous. What kind of rain would you like? You, you mean we can choose our kind? Sure, you can choose your kind. And, brother, there's all kinds. There's mizzle and there's drizzle. But you wouldn't want that. I generally give that away as a free sample. Uh, there's trickle and there's sprinkle, but that's for the little old flower gardens, the little peak old ladies. There's uh, April showers that I can bring in April. I can sometimes bring them in May. There's uh, rain with thunder. There's rain with hail. There's flash floods and there's storms that roll down the shoulder of a mountain. But the biggest of all, that's deluge. But don't ask me for deluge. That takes a bit of doing. What kind do we get for a hundred bucks? You choose it and I'll bring it. This man brags so loud it gives me a pain in the neck. Now, now look, folks. If y'all act like she does, it's gonna make it mighty tough for me to do my job. Cause with this suspicion around, it's a dry season. I don't doubt it. Well, she don't believe in me. How about the rest of you? What do you mean, believe in you? We certainly don't. Then I have changed my mind. I do not want your money. Take it back. Come on, Noah. We made a bargain. It's settled. Now be a good sport. Good sport? What the hell does he expect me to say? Well, I'll explain it to you, Noah. Making rain, it takes a lot of confidence. And when you have doubts about me, I'll have doubts about myself. Oh, I see. If you don't bring rain, you're going to blame it on us. We didn't have confidence. Well, we don't. You can steal our money, but that's all you can steal. That's not the right attitude. Well, I got the right attitude, Starbuck. Come on, take back your dough. No, no. What if I need some help? Uh, I'll help you. And, and so will Pop. But not him. What kind of help? Nothing you can't do. How about you, lady? Any confidence? None. You don't need her, Starbuck. Come on, now. Here, take your dough back. No, no, what I'm going to ask you to do, it ain't going to make no sense. But then what's sensible about a flood or a hurricane? Nothing. <laughs> All right, now what I want you to do, 
You see that old wagon of mine out there? Mm -hmm. Now, on that wagon, I got me a big bass drum. Somebody has got to beat that drum. Beat it? What for? Don't ask no questions. Yeah, and don't get sensible. That's right, Jimmy. Now, who's going to beat that drum? I, I will. I'll beat it. Jimmy, you're going to be my first lieutenant. I want you to go on out there, and every time you get the feeling for it, I want you to beat that drum three times. Boom, boom, boom. Low like thunder. You got that? Yeah, I get it every time I get the feeling. That's right, Jim. When do I start? You already started. Now, Mr. H.C., I want you to pay close attention. On that wagon, I got me a bucket of white paint. Now, it's not ordinary white paint. It's special. It's electromagnetized, oxygenated, dechrominated white. Now, I want you to go out there and paint me a great big white arrow pointing away from the house. That's so the house don't get struck by lightning. Uh -huh. Sounds reasonable. Now, it's too bad you don't have a mule on the place. We got a mule. Yeah? That's great. That's just dandy. No, I want you to get a length of strong rope and go out there and tie that mule's hind legs together. What? Tie the hind legs of a mule? What the hell for? Please, Noah, please, you have got to do like I ask you. I ain't gonna do it. Come on, Noah! I'll be damned. Tie the hind legs of a mule. <laughs> I've been sitting here keeping my mouth shut, wondering how far you'd let this man go and making a fool of you. He can't make me any more fool than I make out of myself. Where's your common sense? Hang on to a little of it. You mean go along with this fella halfway, huh? Well, I can't do that. I gotta take a chance on him, a whole chance, without fear of getting hurt or getting cheated or getting laughed at, as far as he'll take me. A white arrow, you say? A white arrow, H.C. I'll paint it. Mister, you're gonna get your money's worth if it's the last thing I do. Now don't be nervous, boy. I ain't, not a bit of it. That's fine. Confidence. Out of order, Jimmy, beat that drum! Make it rumble! I bet you're real proud of yourself. You're not satisfied to steal our money. You gotta make jackasses out of us. Why'd you send them out there on those fool errands? Why? What for? Well, maybe I thought it was necessary. Necessary? You know it wasn't necessary. Maybe I sent them out there so as I could talk to you alone. If you wanted to talk to me alone, why didn't you say it straight out? Lizzie, I want to talk to you alone. Man to man. Man to man, Lizzie. Excuse me. I made a mistake. You're not a man. Lizzie, can I ask you a little question? No. I think I'll ask it anyway. How come you're fussing at the buttons on your dress? I'm not fussing at the buttons. Well, why don't you let them alone? They're buttoned up just fine, as tight as they're ever going to get. And that's a mighty nice dress, too. It's brand new, isn't it? Are you expecting somebody? None of your business. Woman gets all decked out, she must be expecting her bow. Getting kind of late. Where is he? I'm not expecting anybody. Oh, I see. You was, but now you ain't. You stand you up. Mr. Starbuck, you got more gold. Wait a minute. That question I wanted to ask you before didn't have anything to do with buttons. It's this. The minute I walked into your house, you didn't like me. Now, why is that? Let go of me. You didn't like me. Why? Why did you go up on your hind legs like a frightened mare? I wasn't frightened, Mr. Starbuck. You paraded yourself in here, you took over everything, and I don't like being taken by a con man. Wait a minute, I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of you querying my work and calling me out of my name. I'm calling you what you are, a big mouth liar and a fake. How do you know I'm a liar? How do you know I'm a fake? Maybe I can bring rain. Maybe on the day I was born, God whispered a special word in my ear. Maybe he said, Bill Starbuck, you ain't going to have much in this life. You ain't going to have no wife. You ain't going to have no kids. You ain't going to have no green little house to come home to. But Bill Starbuck, wherever you go, you're going to bring rain. And maybe that's my one and only blessing. There ain't no such blessing in the world. I've seen a lot better blessings, Lizzie girl. I got a brother who's a doctor. And you don't have to tell him where you ache or where you pain. 
It just comes on in, and he lays his hand on your heart, and pretty soon you're breathing sweet again. And I got another brother. He can sing. <laughs> and when he's singing, that song is there. It never leaves you. And I used to say to myself, why ain't I blessed like Fred or Arnie? Why am I just a nothing man with nothing special to my name? But then one summer comes a drought. Fred can't heal it away, and Arnie can't sing it away. But me, I go down to the holler, and I look up, and I say, rain, damn it! Please, bring rain! And that rain came. And I knew, I knew I was one of the family. That's just a story. Now, you don't have to believe that if you don't want to. I don't believe it. You're like Noah. You don't believe in anything. Not true. Oh, yes, it is. You're scared to believe in anything. You put your fancy dress on, the bow don't come, so you're scared nothing will ever come. You got no faith. Got as much as anybody. You don't even know what faith is, and I'm going to tell you, it's believing you see white when your eyes tell you black. It's knowing with your heart. I know you're a fake. I'm sad about you, Lizzie girl. You don't believe in nothing, not even in yourself. You don't even believe you're a woman. And if you don't, you're not. Quit it, Jimmy. Quit it. Evening, fire. Anything doing? Not a thing. So I ran by the house for a while. Any messages? Yeah, this wire just came in from Peaks Junction saying that Tornado Johnson fellow's mm -hmm. riding our way. Oh, and um, old lady Keeley called and said that she heard thunder. How could old... <laughs> How could she hear thunder? She's deaf as a post. I thought I heard it too, but it was too regular. There it goes again. Oh, that sure ain't thunder. Lots of electricity in there. My hair's full of it. Yeah, mine too. Why do you think I stopped by the house a little while ago, huh? <laughs> Say, uh, Bill Mackey told me that the Curry Boys stopped by here a while ago. Oh, yes, I forgot. Anything important? No. He said that Jim Curry came out of here wearing a black eye. He did, huh? That he wasn't wearing it when he came in. What happened? Tell Phil Mackey to mind his own damn business. And me to mind mine too, huh? Sorry, sure. Sheriff? I've been thinking. Changed my mind. About what? That dog you were talking about. Yeah, what about it? Well, if the offer still holds, I'd sure like to have him. Oh, hell, File, I'm sorry. I mean, you said you didn't want him, and little Billy Asterfield came by, and my wife gave it to him. I'm sorry. I... Forget it. File, why'd you change your mind about that dog? Oh, well, I don't know. File. File. Hmm? It didn't have anything to do with the Currys, did it? What the hell would my wanting a dog have to do with the Currys, for God's sake? It did, didn't it? Huh? All right, it did. Why don't you stop teasing yourself? If you want to get out of this stew you're in, why don't you just get out of it? 
Why don't you just go over there and see that curry girl? No. Not gonna be a dunce with a woman, not anymore. Well, hell, just because you made yourself a dunce with a woman once doesn't mean you're gonna do it every time. I'm not gonna go over there and visit her and just stand there like a stick. Well, don't just stand there. I mean, hell, go sit down. Talk. Make up conversations, they stay in my head. Well, hell, flush them out. What if I take an hour off? Take two hours. Hell, take the whole night. Hours all I can stand. Should paint the ground, not the floor. I ain't painting it, I'm cleaning it. Face is all over whitewash. Yeah, I reckon it is. So is overall. Yeah. Look at you. You'd think you never painted nothing in your life. I didn't see the bush. What bush? I was painting backwards, and all of a sudden there was that damn bush. And I bumped and paint and splashed all over everything. What are you limping about? I ain't limping. Mule kick you? Uh-huh. Bad? Bad or good. A mule's kick's a mule's kick. Jimmy! For Pete's sakes, come in here. Quit beating on that drum. <laughs> I think he enjoys it. Sure, he's got the easiest job with a lot of it. Well, he's the lieutenant. Jimmy, you quit that. Except for me to beat it every time I get the feeling. Yeah, Jimmy, if you try to resist the feeling we'd appreciate it. Only macro, Pop. Your face is all over whitewash. It is, is it? Yes, sir. So's your overalls. Well, what do you know? Why don't you wash up? You look foolish. You don't look so bright yourself toting that drum. What am I gonna do with it? For the love of Mike, don't be so dumb. Don't you call me that, Noah? I didn't notice. Anybody uh, see a cloud? Not a whisper one. Don't you expect it, neither. I wouldn't be so sure of that, Noah. Uh, you wouldn't. I would. No, I, I, I think he is going to bring rain. Because I've been looking on his wagon. Boy, he's got all kinds of wheels and flags and a, a bugle and firecrackers. Yeah, and, and all kind of stuff that a con man would have, but nothing that's got anything to do with rain. You're wrong, Noah. What are you doing in there, Jimmy? Uh, he asked me could he spend the night in the tack room, and I said yes, so I thought I'd get him uh, something to sleep on. Sure are stretching yourself to make him cozy, ain't you? Why not? I like him. <laughs> Funny. Me too. Sure is pulling the wool over your eyes. You know, I'm out there with my drum waiting for the feeling to come, and uh, he comes over, and we had a great talk, the two of us. Yeah? What did he try to sell you this time? Nothing. He didn't try and sell me nothing, Noah. He just uh, comes over and... I'm sitting looking at the sky, and, and, and he says, what you thinking about, Jim? Real serious, like, like he gives a damn. And uh, what'd you say to that? Uh, well, I, I said, not much. Well, that's a good start to a conversation. Yeah, and, and then before I know it, I'm, I'm telling him everything about myself. And I'm telling him about Lizzie, and Noah snores at night, and <laughs> I, I even told him about Snooky. Yeah? Yeah. I said, 
What do you think of a girl that wears loud clothes and, and puts lip rouge on her mouth and always runs around wearing a little red hat? Is she fast? And you know what he said? He said, never judge a heifer by the flick of her tail. Sounds like sensible advice. Yeah, I, I think so. And then, uh, and then he says, what do you think of the world, Jim? And, and I says to him, I think it's going to get all swole up and bust right out in our faces. And, and, and you know what he told me, Pop? He said it happened before, and it can happen again. There. Told you he'd sell you a bill of goods. No, I understand that crack. I mean, he's trying to make me feel smart, and I ain't. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. What the hell's got into you? You know, I just thought of something, Noah. You know the only time I feel real dumb? When? When I'm talking to you. Why the hell is that, Noah? Lizzie, thought you went to bed. It's roasting up there. Too bad we don't have one of those electric fans. It's not only that, it's Jimmy and his drums. Hello. Who? No, he's uh, he's not here. No, who, who's that? Who else will have all that gall? Snooky. Uh, no, that calls for me. Well, what you hang up on her for? Save you the trouble. Well, she, she calls me on the phone. You don't have to tell her I ain't here. I can tell her myself. Now, how can you yourself tell her that you ain't here? Talk sense. Well, maybe it don't make sense and all, but you know damn well what I mean. Now, listen here, Jimmy. If you want to get yourself in hot water, all you got to do is lift up that phone caller right back. That's right, Jimmy. That's all you got to do. You stay out of it. Well, I'm just agreeing with you, Noah. You can call her right back. Go on, son. I don't have her telephone number. All you got to do is call the operator. Leave me alone, Starbuck. Go on, Jim. Yeah. I hate to see a word from you, might be a lot of help. He'll work it out, Starbuck. Lizzie, tell that boy to make the phone call. Starbuck will thank you not to interfere in our family. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a damn fool. <clears throat> what are all these things doing here? Well, for Starbuck, Jimmy he thought he'd take him out to the tack room. It's all right. It's all right. Go on, Jimmy. Take him. Go on. No, I don't feel like it anymore. No, you shouldn't have done that. Somebody's got to do it. I think you like doing it. No, I didn't. For Pete's sake, somebody take this family off my hands. I don't want to run it anymore. You don't have to run the family, Noah. Only the ranch. They're both tied up together. And if you don't like the way I do things... That ain't so, Noah. Some things you do real good. Then why don't you give me a little credit once in a while? I'm trying to keep this family going. I'm trying to keep it from breaking its heart on one damn foolishness after another. And what do I get for it? <clears throat> Nothing. But black looks and complaints. Why? Why? Because you're trying to run the family the way you run the ranch. There's no other way. No. Look, when I was your age, I had my nose pressed to the grindstone just like you. And then one day your mother says to me, Harry, slow up, stop, catch your breath. Well, after she died, I took her advice. On account of you three kids, I turned around to enjoy my family. And I found out a good thing, Noah. If you let them live, people pay off better than cattle. Don't be so proud about the way you let us live, Pop. You just take a look at her and don't be so damn proud of yourself. What do you mean by that, Noah? Never you mind. You just think about it. What does he mean by that, Lizzie? Oh, I don't know. Don't pay any attention to him. I don't know whether I'm hungry or thirsty. You want something to eat? No, thanks. Noah was hinting that I made some big mistake with you, Lizzie. Did I? <laughs> of course not. 
I'm perfect. Everybody knows I'm perfect. Good housekeeper, good cook, bright mind, very honest. Oh, it's the damn honest. It kills me. Who do you want a sandwich? Hmm? No, thanks. You gotta get a man the way a man gets God. That's what Noah said. Now, isn't that stupid? That's not even good English. Just forget about that, Lizzie. Hmm. Don't think about it. Think about it. I wouldn't give. I wouldn't give it a second thought. And you know, you know what that Starbucks man said? What, Lizzie? He said, "No." No, why go repeating what people like that have to say? If you do, you just, I don't know. I don't know. But what you need is a, why doesn't it rain? What you need is a flood, a great big end of the world flood. Can a woman take lessons in being a woman? You don't have to take lessons. You are one. Starbucks says I'm not. If Starbucks don't see the woman in you, he's blind. Is file blind? Are they all blind? I'm sick and tired of being me. I want to get out of me. I want... I want to be somebody else for a while. Well, then why don't you go over to the social club and be Lily Ann Beasley? Is that what you want to be? Well, Lily Ann Beasley knows how to get along. All right, then you better call her up on the telephone, ask her to help you join up. <laughs> I, I will. I will. You see, if I don't, I, I'll get myself new dresses cut way down to here and, and some lip rouge and paint my mouth so it looks like I'm always whistling. Okay, fine. Go ahead and look like a silly little jackass. <laughs> Won't be me looking silly. It'll be somebody else, because you got to hide what you are. You can't be honest. You wouldn't know how to be anything else. Oh, wouldn't I? You think it's hard? It's easy. It's easy. You, you watch this. Watch this. How good and good looking you are. And what curly blonde hair and such strong white teeth. Let me count those teeth. One, no, oh, five. And such muscly, muscle, my, no, muscle, no, no, you mustn't see her. Little Lizzie's got to throw up her and die. Good evening. No. Good evening. Oh, hello, File. Uh, come on in. <coughs> it's uh, kind of late. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, we were just, uh... Well, I don't know what we were doing, but come on in. Hello, Lizzie. Hello, File. No, uh... No let up in the drought, is there? <laughs> no, just n none at all. Uh... Uh, H.C., I got to thinking about that little fuss I had with Jimmy this afternoon. About his eye and... Well, I came around to apologize. I'm sorry. You said that this afternoon, File. Uh, but I didn't see it to Jim. That's true. You didn't. Now, he's upstairs. I'll send him down. Jimmy! Come that's, down here that's for a minute! all right, Lizzie. I was going up anyway. You want a cup of coffee? No, thank you. I already had my supper. Yes, of course. I didn't mean to mention supper. Sorry I said it. How about some lemonade? No, thank you. I make lemonade with limes, and I, I guess if 
you make it with limes, you can't call it lemonade, can you? You can if you want to. No law against it. But, um, it's really limeade, isn't it? Yep, that's what it is, all right. Yep, that's what it is, all right. You call me, Lizzie? Hey, Farm. Hey, Jim. Uh, wow, that's a bad eye. I came around to say I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right, Farm. Bygones is bygones. Glad to hear you talk that way. Sure, sure. Well, Files here. <laughs> yes, sir. He certainly is. Is that Jim's drum I've been hearing? Yes. I didn't know he was musical. Well, uh, sit down. Don't, don't you want to sit, sit down or something? No, thank you. <clears throat> I guess, uh, I guess they knew I was lying. Lying about what? I didn't come around and apologize to Jim. What did you come for, Fire? To get something off my chest. See, this afternoon, your father, he, he uh... Well, there's a wrong impression going on in the town that, uh, that I'm a widower. Well, I'm not. I know that. I know you know it, but I got to say it. I'm a divorced man. Well, you, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Oh, oh yes, I do. I came to tell the truth. I, I, I've been denying that, that I'm a divorced man, and, and now I admit it, and that's all I got to say about it, and that squares me with everybody. Does it? Yes, it does. And from here on in, if I want to live alone all by myself, it ain't nobody's business but mine. Now, wait, wait a minute. You're, you're dead wrong. Wrong how? It's everybody's business. Well, how do you figure that, Lizzie? Because you owe something to people. I don't owe anybody anything. Yes, you do. What? Friendship. If... If somebody holds out his hand towards you, you got to reach out and take it. What do you mean, I got to? Well, got to. There are, too, there are too many people alone, and if you're lucky enough to have somebody want you for a friend, well, it's an obligation. This ain't something that the two of us can settle by, by just talking for a minute. No, no, it isn't. Take some time. Yes, it will. Oh, you here, Fire? Yeah, I guess I am. Um. Well, I just came in from a feed book. Well. Well, uh, well. Now, what what were you telling me? What what were you what were you telling me? Oh no, you were telling me about your divorce. Oh, oh no, I wasn't. I will. She, uh, walked out on me. I'm sorry. Yeah, the school teacher. He was from Louisville. Kentucky. 
What was she beautiful? Yeah, she was. Yes, that's what I thought. Black hair. Oh, black hairs. That's pretty, all right. I always used to think if, uh, if a woman had pitch black hair, she was halfway to being a beauty. At least halfway. At least. With a school teacher. Ran off with a school teacher. Well, what was he like? <laughs> He had weak hands, and, uh, and he had kind of nearsighted eyes, and when, uh, and he always looked like he's about ready to faint. Mm -hmm. And she ran off with him. And there I was. Well, maybe, maybe the teacher needed her and you didn't. Sure, I needed her. Did you tell her so? No, I didn't. Why should I? Why should you? Why didn't you? Look here. There's one thing I've learned. Be independent. If you don't ask for things, if you don't let on you need things, then pretty soon you don't need them. There are some things you always need. Well, I won't ask anybody for anything. But if you had asked, she might have stayed. Oh, I know she might have stayed. The night she left, she said to me, File, tell me not to go. Tell me don't go. And you did? I tried. Couldn't. Oh. Pride. Look here. If a woman wants to go, let her go. If you, if you have to hold her back, it's no good. Wow. You mean to tell me if you had to do it over Still again... Still wouldn't ask her to stay. Just two words. Don't go and you wouldn't say It's em. not the words. It's begging and I won't beg. Oh, you're a fool. Whatever am I doing? I'm getting so serious with you. Because <sighs> whenever I do, I just put my foot in it. Because that's, well, that's not my nature at all. I'm, I'm really a happy-go-lucky girl. Uh, would you like some grapes? No, thank you. Oh, they're so purpley and pretty. We had some right after supper. I wish you'd been to supper. We had such a nice supper. And I just love cooking. There's only one thing I like better than cooking, and that's reading a good book. Do you read very much? No, only legal circulars from Washington. Oh, Washington. I just read a book about him. What a great man. Father, Wasn't he a great man? Country. Yes, exactly. Oh, my. A black silk bow tie. I, I just die for man in black silk bow tie. Ain't silk at celluloid. No, it looks so real. It looks so real. It ain't real. real, it's fake. And those teeth, you got the strongest white teeth. Quit that. What? Quit it. What? Stop what? sassying around like some dumb little flirt. Silk tie, strong white teeth. What, what do you take me for? What do you take yourself for? Just... Stop being so damn ridiculous and be yourself. What'd you do, Lizzie? He run out on you? What, what happened, happened, Lizzie? Where'd you go? What were you doing? Were you watching a show? Did you think this was Landry's slide? What, what'd he say? Well, what'd you say? Nothing, not one sensible thing. I couldn't even talk to him. But you were talking? No, I was wiggling around like Lillian Beasley. Made a fool of myself. Lizzie, don't blame yourself. It wasn't your fault. No, it wasn't her fault. It wasn't Files' fault. You know damn well whose fault it was. You mean it was mine, Noah? You bet it was yours. Noah, Pop! No, Lizzie, he's got to explain that. Oh, I'll explain it, all right. You've been building up a rosy dream for her, and she ain't got no right to hope for it. She's got a right to hope for anything. No, she's got to face the facts. 
and you got to help her face them. Stop telling her lies. I never told her a lie in my life. You never told her nothing but lies. She's the smartest girl in the world. She's beautiful. And that's the worst lie of all, because you know she's not beautiful. She's plain. No, you quit that now. Yeah, you go right along with it. But you better listen to me, Lizzie, because I'm the only one around here who loves you enough to tell you the truth. You're plain. Damn it, no, you quit that. You go look in the mirror. You're plain. No, I just sit down. Oh, Jimmy, stop it. Pull me. Stop it. No. Stop it. Pull me. Now quit it, you damn fool. Quit it. Let go of me, right. sir. Get outside, boy. Go on, get outside. Yeah, I get outside. I get outside, I ain't never coming back. Next time that kid goes at me. Next time that kid goes at you, I'll see he's got fighting lessons. Look, you, clear on out of here. No, I ain't gonna clear out. And while I'm here, you're gonna quit calling that kid a dumbbell, because he's not. He can take a lousy little hickory stick, and he can see magic in it. But you wouldn't understand that, because it's not in your books. <laughs> no, you're out of here. And while I'm here, you're gonna quit calling her plain, because you don't know what's plain and what's beautiful. Look, Starbuck, this is family. This ain't your fight. Oh, yes, it is. I've been fighting fellas like you all of my life. And I always lose, but this time, by God, this time. Sorry to hit Jimmy and I'll tell him so. But I ain't sorry for one single word I said to her. No, that's enough. No, it's not enough. You better think about what I said, Lizzie. Ain't nobody gonna come riding up here on a white horse. No one's going to snatch up in his arms and marry you. You're going to be an old maid. And the sooner you face that, the sooner you're going to stop breaking your heart. Old maid. Forget it, Lizzie. Forget everything no, you said. Oh, he's right. I've known it all along. Lizzie. It just sounds so much worse when you put a name to it. Why? Why? Lizzie, you got to believe me. I don't believe you. You've been lying to me, and I've been lying to myself. i got to see things the way they are and the way they will be. Lizzie, honey, please. <laughs> Jimmy, you'll get married. <laughs> One of these days, even Noel will get married. I'll be the visiting aunt. Noel will say, Junior, be kind to your Aunt Lizzie. Her nerves aren't so good. Jimmy's wife will say, She's been visiting here a whole week. When will she ever go? Go where, for God's sake? Lizzie, you'll always have a home. This house will be yours. House, house, Lizzie, house, stop house, it. Lizzie, house. Lizzie, please. Papa, tell me what to do. Tell me Lizzie. what to do. <laughs> please. Please. Who is it? Who's there? Me, Lizzie. Here. What's that? Bed stuff taken. Is that what you came out here for, Lizzie? No, I can't cuddle up. Go on, Lizzie. I wanted to thank you for what you said to Noah. Well, I mean, every word of it. And Jimmy, I'm sure you meant that, too. What I said about you? 
I don't believe it. Lizzie, what are you scared of? You. I don't trust you. Why? What don't you trust about me? The way you talk and brag. Even your name. What's wrong with my name? Sounds fake. Sounds like you made it up. Darn right, I did make it up. There, of course. Well, why not? You know what name I was born with? No. Smith? Smith! For the love of Mike, Smith! Now, what kind of name is that for a fella like me? I needed a name that had the whole sky in it, plus the power of a man. Starbuck. Now, there's a name. That's mine. No, it's not. You were born with Smith, and that's your name. You're wrong, Lizzie girl. The name you choose for yourself is a lot more your own than the name you were born with. And if I was you, I'd sure choose another name than Lizzie. Well, I'm very pleased with it, thank you. No, no, you're not. You're not pleased with anything but yourself. And I'm sure you ain't pleased with Lizzie. I don't ask you to be pleased with it. I am. Lizzie, why well, don't stand for nothing? Stands for me. I'm not the Queen of Sheba or Lady Godiva or... Cinderella at the ball. Would you like to be? Oh, you're ridiculous. What's ridiculous about it? Dream you're somebody and be somebody. But Lizzie, yeah, that's nobody. There's so many millions of wonderful women with wonderful names. Leonora, Desdemona, Florinda, Annabella, Carolina, Christina, Diana. Lizzie? Good night, Starbucks. Wait a minute. Wait one little half a minute. I got the greatest name for you. I have got the best no. name. Sit down here. Just you listen. Wait till you hear it now. What? Melisande. I don't like it. That's because you don't know anything about her. But when I tell you who she was, lady, when I tell you who she was now. Who? <laughs> well, she was the most beautiful. She was the beautiful wife of uh, King Hamlet. You ever hear of him? Go on, go on. Well, he was the fella that sailed out across the ocean and brought back the Golden Fleece. You know why he did that? Because Queen Melisande begged him for it. <laughs> I tell you, that Melisande now, she was so beautiful. Her hair was so long and curly. Every time he looked at her, he just fell right down and died. And this King Hamlet, he'd do anything for her. I mean, he'd do anything she wanted. So when she said, Hamlet, I got a terrible hankering for a soft gold fleece, he just naturally sailed right off to find it. <laughs> And when he came back to her, all bleeding and torn, he took that fur piece and he went and laid it right down at her pretty white feet. And she took that fleece of gold and she wrapped it right around her pretty naked pink shoulders. And she said, I got the gold fleece. <laughs> now I'll never be cold no more. <laughs> Melisande. What a woman, huh? What a name. Starbuck, you silly jackass. You take a hundred different <laughs> stories that I've read in a hundred different places and you roll them up into one big, fat, ridiculous lie. I wasn't lying, I was dreaming. It's the same thing. Well, if you think it's the same thing, I'll take it back about your name. Lizzie's just right for you. And I'll tell you another name that suits you pretty good, and that's Noah, because you and your brother, you got no dreams. Starbuck, you think all dreams have to be your kind? There are other kinds of dreams. They're small. They're quiet. The ones that come to a woman when she's shining the silverware. Or putting the moth flakes in the closet. Like what? 
like a man's voice saying, Lizzie, is my blue suit pressed yet? And that same voice saying, scratch between my shoulder blades. And kids teasing and, and setting up a racket. And how it feels to say the word husband. There are all kinds of dreams, minor, small ones, like my name, Lizzie, but but they're real, like my name. So, so you can have your dreams, and I'll have mine. Oh, Lizzie, Lizzie, <laughs> Lizzie, I'm sorry, Lizzie, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I hope your dreams come true, Lizzie. They won't. I they never they will. You believe in yourself, and they will. I got nothing to believe in. You're a woman. Believe in that. How can I when nobody else will? You got to believe in it first. Let me ask you a question. Are you pretty? No, I'm plain. Well, you see that? You don't even know you're a woman. I am a woman, a plain one. There's no such thing as a plain woman. Lizzie, every real woman is pretty. They're all pretty in a different way, but they're all pretty. Not me. Not when I look in the looking glass. But don't let Noah be your looking glass. It's got to be inside of you. And one day that looking glass will be the man that loves you. It'll be in his eyes, maybe. You'll look in that mirror and you'll be more than pretty. You'll be beautiful. <laughs> no. It'll never happen. Make it happen. It'll never happen. Make it happen, Lizzie. Take your hair down and thank no. Kitty. Hey, come on, thank. Oh. Lizzie. Please, Lizzie. Close your eyes. Close them. Close them. Now, now say I'm pretty. I can't. Say it, Lizzie, please. Pretty. Say it again. I, I'm pretty. Say it and mean it, Lizzie. I'm... I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Um. Why did you do that? Because when you said you were pretty, it was true. Uh, no. Lizzie, stop that crying. <laughs> stop it, Lizzie. Stop the crying and look at me. I can't. I look at can't. me, Lizzie. Please look at my eyes. Look here. <laughs> what do you see? <laughs> I can't. I can't believe what I see. You tell me what you see. Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Oh. Give Sarah my best. Thank you, Howard. Sorry I woke you up. But if you see uh, Jimmy or hear from him, you uh, be sure and call me, will you? Oh, no, no. Uh, nothing's wrong. Thank you. Did Jimmy get home yet? Nope. Tell them the kid's near 2 o'clock. Go on back to bed, Noah. Don't worry about him. I ain't worried about him. I don't give a damn what happens to okay, him. Okay, fine. 
Maybe he's at the Hopkinson's. I'll give him a call. No, I call them all. Nobody's seen him. If you'd have seen my side of this, it wouldn't have happened. I see your side, Noah. I just ain't on your side. Nobody is. Good evening. Where the hell you been? Out. 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 What's the matter with you? Are you drunk? No, big brother, I ain't drunk. If I cared to be drunk, I'd be googly-eyed. Where'd you get the stogie, Jimmy? This ain't a stogie, Pop. This here is a Havana Panatella. 85 cents. And it's a present. Who the hell gave it to you? Well, I the hell gave it to me for being a big boy. You ain't told us where you've been yet. I don't have to, but I will. I've been out with my favorite girl, Snooky. <laughs> you crazy dumb Oh, uh, 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 no, don't you call me that no more. I should take this 85 cent of Vanna Panatella and I shall squash it right in your mean old face. What happened, Jim? Can't you see what happened? Uh you been riding with that Snooky McGuire. She got him all hot up, and then, by God, she trapped him. No, you got it all Don't wrong. Don't you lie to me, Jimmy Curry. And then I stop looking out after you get yourself in trouble. No, I tell you what really happened. You're going to split your britches. We went riding. Yep, that's right. We opened that Essex up, and we went 40 million miles an hour. And, and then we stopped that car, and, and we got out. And, and, and we sat down under a great big old tree. And, we could look up through the branches, and we could see the sky all full of stars. Damn, it was full of stars. And uh, I turned around, and I kissed her once, and I kissed her a hundred times. And all the while I was doing that, I knew I could carry her anywhere, right straight up to the moon. But all the time, I kept thinking, well, Noah's going to show up, and he's going to haul her woe. Noah didn't show up. And so I kept right on kissing her. And, and then... Then something happened. She started crying, and I was crying, and, well, I knew that any minute now, we'd be right up there on the moon. And then, without Noah being there, all by my smart little self, I hollered, whoa! <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Your yip is accepted. I don't believe a word of it. Why don't you give you the hat? Uh, same reason that I get to hurt my elk's tooth. We're engaged. So I was right. She did trap you. Noah, I see him, and I have to give you my Havana Panatella. Don't listen to him, Jimmy. Congratulations. Thanks, Pop. It's accepted. Now, where's Lizzie? I, I got to tell her. Where the Sam hell do you think she is? She's asleep. Well, I'm going to wake her up, then. Uh, Jimmy, wait. She ain't up there. Where is she, Pop? Where is she, Pop? She's out in the tack room. You mean my Starbucks? Yes. Well, that's great. I, I got me another cigar for Lizzie. Wait a minute. You mean you let her walk in on that fellow while he was sleeping? You didn't even try to stop her. No, I didn't. You called her an old maid. You took away what little bit of hope she ever had. But after you left, she lifted up those bed linens and ran out. I didn't ask her where she was going. But I'm glad she went. Because if she lost her hope in here, maybe she find it out there. That was on your mind the minute you set eyes on that fellow. You put it awful cut and dried, Noah. It's the truth. What of it? I think it's great them being out there together. They might get real serious about each other, and before you know it, I got me a new brother. And boy, I'd swap him for you anyway. You won't have to swap him for anybody. Because he's not the marrying kind, not that faker. I'll bet he is a marrying kind. I'll bet he is. Pop, what do you think Rainmaker makes? <laughs> Don't let's be beforehand, Jimmy. It's a 
sheriff in the file. Mind if we come in, H.C.? Well, hello, file. Uh, hey, Sheriff. Come on in, H.C. How you doing, boys? Yeah. Kind of late to be visiting, eh? Well, uh, we ain't exactly what you call visiting, H.C. Well, how's Lizzie? Fine, boy, fine. You just seen her a little while ago. Yeah, I know. You and the Sheriff come call on Lizzie? No. Uh, no. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I tell you, H.C., we've been getting a lot of phone calls and wires from Peaks Junction, Pedleyville, and all up and down the state line, and seems they're looking for a fella. Well, he's kind of a con man. Remember I told you earlier, uh, his name was Tornado Johnson? Is she asleep? Who? Lizzie? Well, I reckon she is. You get any wind of him? Who? Tornado Johnson. Nope. Tornado Johnson, alias Bill Smith, alias Bill Harmony. Never met anybody call himself any of those names. Oh. Anybody else been around here? Only you, File. Kind of a hot night to be asleep, ain't it? Lizzie's a good sleeper. Yeah, must be. No Tornado Johnson, huh? Well, that sounds kind of fishy. What do you mean, fishy? Well, you see, Pedleyville and the Junction and Three Point, together we kind of, uh... Well, we know you ain't the kind of a fellow to protect a criminal, H.C. Really a criminal, huh? Well, he's wanted. What's he wanted for, File? Wanted in Oklahoma. Sold 400 tickets to a great big rain festival. No rain, no festival. Little town over in Nebraska, he drummed up a whole lot of excitement about a thing he called the spectacular eclipse of the sun. Even sold him a thousand pair of smoked eyeglasses to look at it. No eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, month of February, sold 400 wooden poles. Called them tornado rods. Claimed that if the town ever got hit by a tornado, the wind would just blow through there like a gentle spring breeze and not even hurt a thing. Well, when he left, that town got hit by every kind of a blow you can imagine. Windstorm, hailstorm, cyclone, hurricane. Blew the tornado rods off the roof and blew the town right off the map. Town ever get hit by a tornado? No, it didn't. That's all a guarantee it wouldn't get hit by a tornado. And then... Don't sound like a criminal to me, File. Oh, hell no. He ain't H.C., but we gotta do something about him. Hell, we ain't locked up anyone around here in three weeks. <laughs> Sorry, can't help you, Sheriff. Yeah, well, I got a feeling you can. You see, wherever this fella goes, he carries around a big bass drum with him. Whose drum is this, anyway? Uh, uh well, this here is drum's mine. See, I'm fixing to be a drummer. Mm-hmm. Well, who painted that big white arrow right there on the ground? I did. Well, what do you think it'd be, H.C., a whitewash painter? Maybe. Uh-huh. Well, whose wagon is that out there? File, I think we better look at that wagon. Why'd you do that? Why the hell did you do that? I don't know. Why didn't you just tell him straight out, the fella you're looking for is in the tack room with my daughter? Because he's with my daughter. All right. I didn't tell him he was lying. I stood by you, but I ain't standing by you no more. Where you going, Noah? I'm going out the tack room. I'm gonna bring her oh, in. Oh, wait. I'm gonna bring him in, too. He's a quick fellow, Noah. You're a little slow on your feet. I'll be a little quicker with this. Put that down. You want him out there with her, don't you? A crook and a faker and I don't know what else. I'll tell you what else, Noah. He's a man. Yeah, Pop's right. Getting married is getting married. Jimmy, you always say the smart thing at a dumb time. Well, I'm all for getting married, Pop. I don't care who the fella is. Is that the way you think? You know it's not the way I think. Then I'm going out there. I said stay here. It's not right, Pop. It's 
not right. No, you're so full of what's right, you can't see what's good. It's good for a girl to get married, sure. But maybe you were right when you said she won't ever have that. Well, she's got to have something. Lizzie has got to have something. Even if it's only one minute. With a man talking quiet and his hand touching her face. And if you go out there and shorten the time they have together, if you put one little dark shadow over the brightest time of Lizzie's life, I swear I'll come out after you with a whip. Now you give me that gun. always walk so fast and ride so far, I never have time to stop and ask myself no question. If you did stop, what question would you ask? Well, I guess I'd say, big man, where are you going? Big man, where are you going? I don't know. I reckon I better kiss you again. Didn't anybody ever kiss you before I did, Lizzie? Yes. When was that? <laughs> when I was about 12 years old, I guess. There was a boy in school with red hair and freckles. Oh, I just thought he was the beginning of the world. He never paid me any mind. And one day, he was standing around with a bunch of the boys. And suddenly, he shot right over to me, kissed me real hard on the mouth. And I got so stirred up. And then he ran back to the other boys. And I heard him say, I'll kiss anything on a dare, even your old man's pig. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran home up the back stairs, locked the door, looked in the mirror. From that day on, I knew I was plain. Are you plain, Lizzie? No. I'm beautiful. You are. And when I leave here, don't you ever forget it. I won't forget it. I won't forget anything you ever said, ever. Oh, Lizzie. Lizzie, I want to live forever. Oh, I <laughs> hope you do. Wherever you are, I hope you do. You don't say that as if you think I'm ever going to get what I'm after. I don't know exactly what it is you're after. I'm after a clap of lightning. I want things to be as pretty when I get them as they are when I'm thinking about them. I think they're prettier when you get them. No. There's nothing as pretty in your hands as it was in your head. There ain't no world anywhere near as good as the world I got up here. Why is that, Lizzie? I don't know. Maybe. Because... Because you don't take time to see it. You always here, there, nowhere, running away, keeping, keeping your own company. But if you kept company with the world... I'd learn to love it. You might, if you saw it real. Now, some nights, I'll be in the kitchen washing dishes and... Pop will be playing poker with the boys, and I'll look at him real close. First, I just see an ordinary, middle-aged man. Nothing very interesting to look at. And then, minute by minute, I see, see little things I never saw in him before. Good things and bad things. <laughs> Queer little habits I'd never, 
noticed he had before. Suddenly I know who he is. And I love him so much, I could, I could cry, and I just thank God that I took the time to see him real. Well, I ain't got the time. And you ain't got no world, except the one you make up in your head. Lizzie, uh, I got something to tell you. You were right. I'm a liar and a con man and a fake. I never made rain anywhere in my life. Not a single raindrop. Nowhere. Not anywhere at all. I know. All of my life, I've been wanting to make a miracle. Nothing. I'm a great big blowhard, Lizzie. No, you're all dreams, and it's no good to live in your dreams. It's no good to live outside of them, either. Maybe somewhere between the two, Lizzie, would you like me to stick around for a few days? Did I hear you right? Well, not for good, you understand. Just for a few days. Starbuck, are you fooling me? No, I mean it. Would you? Would you? Ri for a few days, well, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Lizzie. I can't stand it. Lizzie. I can't stand it. You look up at the sky, and you cry for a star, and you know you'll never get it. And then one night, you look down and, and there it is, just shining in your hands. Where's Starbuck? In the tack room. You know, I think I saw a wisp of a cloud, no bigger than a mare's tail. He's even talking like him. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Why don't you comb your hair? Why? I like it this way. I'm going to wear it this way all my life. Pins? No more pins. But, Pop, I got me something else. What, Lizzie? I got me a bow. Have you, honey? Not an always bow, but a bow for meanwhile. He says he's gonna go in a few days, but anything can happen in a few days. Anything. My world's turned clear around. Why don't you tell her, Pop? <laughs> tell me what? You're right about that fellow, Lizzie. He's a, a liar and a con man. But he's not bad. He's good. And he's so alone. He's so terribly alone. Come here, Lizzie. What? Come take a look out this window. What are they doing out there on his wagon, Pa? They're getting evidence against him, Lizzie. Sheriff's here to lock him up. No, they can't. They can't, Lizzie? That. They yes, can't they arrest can. him. They have no right. Pa, we've got to help him. him. There's nothing we can do for him. Not for him, for me. For you, Lizzie? You think he knows who you are? I think he dreamed you up in his head. He sees me real. He sees me real as you do. You believe that, Lizzie? Do you think he sees you real? Answer me. Yes, he does. All right, then you better help him get away. Now you go out the back door and <laughs> you can't let her do that. Yes, Pop. I can't. No, because I'm not gonna let you. Well, you wake? Hello, Fire. They said you were asleep. Did they? It's 
Excuse, excuse me. I, Where are you going, Lizzie? Just outside. No. Wait a minute. What are you in such a rush for? I d I wanted to see what you were doing out there on that wagon. Well, I came in now, so you don't have to go unless there's some other reason for you going. No. No. Okay. I guess we got what we came for. Where is he, H.C.? Do your own work file. H.C., I don't want this family mixed up in any trouble. Now, tell me where he is, please. He left about an hour ago, file. Where'd he go? Mm -hmm. Pedleyville. Pedleyville? How'd he go? His wagon's still outside. Took Jim's room. He took my room. That's right. Oh, I took think you're home. all lying. What the hell's going on here, anyway? I ask you questions, you tell me a pack of lies. And for what? A stranger don't mean anything to you? Or does he? Maybe you ought to answer that, Lizzie. Oh, wait a minute. He said you were asleep and you weren't. Why'd they lie about that? Where were you, Lizzie? It's got nothing to do with you. It's got a lot to do with me. Tell me. I don't want to Starbuck, run! Starbuck, run! Starbuck, run! Oh, that's run. All it is. What's going on? Sheriff, you're under arrest. Don't go for that door. If you hadn't have been singing, you'd have heard me. Oh, I never regret singing, Lizzie. All right, Sheriff, let's go. No, no, wait a minute. L let him go. What? L let him get away. I can't do that, Lizzie. Look at this bulletin. We don't have to look at that. We've been looking at him. This is all I have to go by, H.C. You got us to go by, file. We've been with this fella for the whole night. We gave him $100, and we never regret a nickel of it. He ain't no criminal. He don't belong in jail. Now, wait a minute. Now, we took a chance on him. You take a chance on us. Oh, give it up, folks. The sheriff's the sheriff. He can't see any further than his badge. Is that true, File? No, damn well it's not true. And let him go. Please, File, let him go. heard a word from you, Noah. There'd be some people around who would think I was breaking the law, right? Nobody I know. All right. Go on. Get on out of here. Well, I'm a son of a gun. Go on before I change my mind. Lizzie, it's lonely as dying out there. Will you go with me? Starbuck? Lizzie, I'm talking to you. Lizzie, Lizzie don't go. What'd you say? I said don't go. Come on, Lizzie. What'll I do? What'll I do, Pop? Whatever you do, remember you've been asked. You don't never have to go through life a woman who ain't been asked. I'm sure asking, Lizzie. Listen, you're beautiful now, but you go with me and you'll be so beautiful, you'll light up the whole world. Don't say that. You'll never be Lizzie no more. You'll be Melisande. Said the wrong thing. Melisande, what the hell is that? Her name's Lizzie Curry. It's not good enough, not for her. Oh, it's good enough for me. Come on, Lizzie. I can't. I gotta be Lizzie. Melisande's a name for one night, but. Lizzie will do me my whole life long. Well, boys, I'm sorry about the rain. But then again, I didn't stay my full term. There's your $100 back. Another day, maybe, in a dry season. So long, folks. Thank you, Fire. Thank you. Well, you got your hair down. <laughs> yep, she sure has changed. Jimmy, quit beating on that drum. I ain't beating on no drum. It sounds like it is thunder. Lightning! 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 Lightning!
24 hours. Oh, Rain, Lizzie, for the first time in my life. Rain, give me that $100. So long, beautiful. Thank <laughs> you.